welcome back to Sensible Senko and yet another video in the series. So this week I thought we'd have a chat about EduKeys learning plans and provision maps. Why you might ask? Well because I constantly get tagged into that one on Facebook. Admittedly I do work for them, I do quite a bit of their consultant Senko work for them and I do promote their product. I'm quite happy to answer questions at any time. But very often those questions can be answered by booking a demo with the company and they can't be answered on a Facebook post. However, what I thought I'd do today then is give you a really quick, and I do mean quick, summary of what the programme has to offer. So a real whistle-stop tour. Let's see what it's got for you. And remember, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, click that subscribe button and leave me a comment in the comments section below. OK, Thanks. so this is the dashboard. It's what you see when you log into EduKeys Learning Plans and Provision Maps. And mine has been connected up to my MIS, so all of my school role is on here. If I click this button here, I can filter it down to just my SEN pupils or perhaps my pupils who are pupil premium or perhaps that crossover between those two groups if I wanted to. Um, sometimes we get asked why is EAL not on there as a label? Well, that's because we would have too many of these little boxes. You can access that by clicking on admin and it opens up a table and you'd then be able to um, filter that down by the table to see what's going on. Um, so if I wanted to find out something about a student, I can just go and click on them or I can start typing their name in. There's two Abigails in this school, one in year seven, one in year 10. Um, that's a quick way of finding them. Or if I know what year group they're in, perhaps I could type a year group in and filter it down that way instead. Up at the top here, I've got some coloured boxes and this is what schools really find quite useful actually. So we've got uh, reviews that are due soon or overdue. And that might be a review for a plan or an IEP, whatever it is you want to call them. Um, or it might be a review for a provision or intervention, something that you've put in place to support those children. We've got recent parental comments, so we can share this online with parents. Um, and if they comment, that will come back onto this screen. It also comes up over here. This account doesn't have any parental comments on it at the moment. I decided to use a, a blank account. Um, recent school Robin replies. So if I want to share that with teachers, I can send it out as a school robin or round robin, whatever it is you call it in your school. And instead of it being on a piece of paper in their pigeonhole, they can fill it in on here. And it's not going to my email box for me to lose it. It's actually collating it all in one place. Um, active provisions. So all my interventions or provisions all put in one place and any active learning plans. And uh, anybody who's ever heard me do a demo will know that I very cynically call these the Ofsted boxes. So on a minus two to plus two scale, if you don't know what that means, go and watch my video about measuring outcomes. I talk about the gas scale, but on a minus two to plus two scale, how well are we actually doing? Um, on the right hand side, a bit of a, a kind of information chart, if you like, how many students are on your SEN register at the different stages. And if you have been spending money, you get a bit of a pupil premium, non-pupil premium breakdown. Um, there's also You'll also see on Granetta up here that there is a little flag up in the corner of her card. And the reason for that is she has got a plan that has been written for her. So let's have a look at Granetta in a bit more detail. So I've given Granetta a click there and this is her core data page. So information that's been pulled across from my MIS. Um, she's on the SEN stage monitoring apparently. And underneath um, there I've got some information again being pulled across from the MIS. These boxes down here are fields I have added to it. So I can choose to add additional fields. Moving on from there, pupil photo, and then I've got my electronic filing cabinet. So I've got my learning plan here. So uh, this is the plan that I've got in place for her. I do actually only have one plan on this system. It's like getting a brand new account and playing with it. And it's apparently due for review on the 7th of May. Um, and it's, here's her current plan. If I want to jump to that, I use this little context-driven menu at the side, give it a click and I can jump to that plan really quickly. If you're not quite sure about the difference between a passport and a plan, go and have a look at my video on does every child need an IEP, which explains about the differences between those. Um, underneath I've got her provision, so everything that she has been allocated. And at the moment we can see she's got forest school and phonics intervention and breakfast club 
and a whole variety of other things. Um, and I can see how often she's receiving those interventions. And then down at the bottom, I've got some files. I've attached a whole variety of different files to her programme for her. And this is where we tend to get that question about CPOMs and Educate. And some schools will say, oh, well, I've got CPOMs. I do all my SCN in CPOMs. Well, actually, the only thing they're doing is using it as a cloud storage. But actually, what you can also do within here is create your plans and your provisions and your costs and run your reports, which you can't do in CPOMs. Underneath I have that parental involvement, like I said I can choose to share this online with parents, they can't mess about. And then right down at the very bottom on this screen you'll actually see safeguarding because I am a DSL within this school, so I get that full picture of the child and any information about their safeguarding concerns would be on this core screen for me as well. I'm now going to click on edit current plan and I'm going to jump to Granetta's current plan just to show you a good old fashioned IUP because let's face it, I'm a good old fashioned Senko. At the top end of their core information, I tend to skip straight over it because it's been pulled from Sim, so it's probably going to be correct. Assess is the first section, so what do I want to say about her strengths and her areas of concern? And then plan. And this is where the programme kind of comes in really quick for new Senkos, perhaps. So you can add blank targets and you go across the screen and you type into there whatever it is you want the child to achieve. So maybe it's to learn how to count to 10. If you really can't think of what the target needs to be, what you can also do is click add target from the library. And we have put into that library 1,017 targets already there for you. If I give that one a click, it will jump into the table for me. And you know what? I don't quite like it. It's not quite right. It's not really what I want it to say. So I can click the edit button and I can go in and I can change that and adapt it to be very specific for my student and for my school. Um, over on the right hand side I can assign a member of staff so again it's pulled my students over, it pulled my staff over at the same time so that might be somebody who is going to look after that target or report back to me. If I've already done the provisions part of this Imagine. you will find that they are listed out here and that shows that that target is being delivered through that intervention rather than perhaps through classwork or through general work. I've got a summary, parent voice and pupil voice which are really really important. So I do collect parental signatures. This one actually lets me print off a signature sheet for so that. I would save that plan. And I could print it. It comes up as a nice little PDF file. And then let it tick along for however long, in this case till May. And you click the review button. So if I click create a review, there's that target that I set. And I've also got my notes column on the right hand side. So if she hasn't achieved it, why not? If she has achieved it, what did we do that really helped her to do it? So if I give it a plus two for this one, and if I click save review, if I go back to that plan, um, it's still there. What you then do is you archive it because that's what you would do. You'd throw it in the filing cabinet because we've done with that plan. Um, and what we really don't want to do is have to sit and write it all out again. So we clone it. And if you notice, we have now changed to plan number two. Uh, my target is still there because I said clone it, give me a copy. But you know what? I now wanted to do that 10 over 10 weeks or so. I can click save on that. So it's really quick and easy to create the plans and to put the targets on. All right, so let's have a look at the provisions part of the programme. So if I click provisions here, you will see a map pop up on my screen. And this is my whole school provision map. Okay, so if I click on provisions here, it takes me to my whole school provisions map and I apparently have 35 interventions running in my school. And if I scroll to the right there, I can see my total cost and my cost per pupil. Um, and I can see which area of concern it belongs to, which wave it is. If one of the nice things actually is if I wanted to find everything that Graham was a part of, assuming there's only one Graham in my school, if I type his name, uh, it will actually filter it down for me to show everything that Graham is actually a part of there. You can also do the same thing with member of staff. So if I wanted to find out everything that I'm actually involved in delivering. So my name is there and I'm apparently involved in nine different interventions in this particular school. Um, and that's quite handy if you've got a member of staff who's off sick for the day. So you could quickly bring it up and say, oh goodness, what have we got to cover? If I scroll down, I'm going to borrow Emil Numeracy Catch-Up, because I always do, and click on Edit Provision. 
What I have on here is some information about that provision. So it's a numeracy catch-up programme. Uh, it's wave two. I'm going to pay for it from catch-up funding because this is a, a programme that can be used with reception through to year six, but it can also be used with year seven and eight for catch-up. And I'm going to use a rat maths assessment for actually um, looking at that and a standardised score. And it's my students with a standardised score below 90 that are going to do this. And I'm looking to improve their score by at least five points on that. Schedule and session, so when am I doing it, how long for, how often, it's a computer based programme, you play games, so three 20 minute sessions a week would be absolutely perfect. And how much is it going to cost? Well this programme is actually £500, it's a fixed cost, there's nothing else in there, so that's what I've put in. And this particular programme um, is £500 regardless how many students I want to use it for. So I'm actually going to use it with 52 students, which is why they're all listed out here and you'll see their standard scores have been entered as their baseline score and that actually works out at £16.28 per pupil and you might be wondering why that's because Mr Brown down here is the numeracy TA who is going to be supervising it his salary is taken into account as well and pretty much like the plan I can click the review button create a review and this time I would go down and put the end grade in and then using this information at the top here make that judgment call as to whether it's a minus two minus one zero plus one or plus two and if I need to put some notes in that right hand column um, we also have lurking in the program that a lot of people don't realize a meetings log and this is where you can record pieces of information, perhaps where a parent has met with one member of staff after school and you need to record what was said before they come in the following morning and try to play two members of staff off against each other. This doesn't replace a safeguarding log, so safeguarding is entirely separate within the programme. This is more uh, an SEN record of information, if you like. So you could record telephone calls, meetings, people appear in reception, observations. We've got that nice chronology there, which you can print off and use with any external services that come in that say, what have you been doing for this child? Really, really useful for those children who are pre-SEN to keep a bit of a record about what you're doing for them or any concerns or niggles that you've got. So the meetings log is really helpful for that. Okay, so what you end up with then is all of this information and, you know, we've got files in there, we've got their plan. If you wanted to, you could write a passport instead. I talked about those school robins sending out information out to staff and gathering it back in or recording safeguarding concerns if you had those two add-on modules. The reason we do it is so that we can generate very quick, simple reports. Now, if I click on costs report here, and if I choose a breakdown, what you'll see is there's a whole variety of different ways I can break the information down. And generally speaking, it's usually the head teacher shouting at me going, how much are we spending? So we're just going to click provision. So this is actually showing me everything I've had running in my school since uh, the 1st of August 2019 through to the 1st of August 2020. And apparently I'm spending £260,000, but I've got my one-to-one -one, um, looked after children support in there. I've got my uniform allocation because I'm using it for pupil premium purposes. One of the other questions you very often get asked is how much are we spending on an individual pupil? So I can do that as well. So I can see here that Granetta, who we picked on at the beginning, I'm apparently spending just short of £4,000 on her. And if I scroll down, um, oh, Wendy's, she's on 7,123. So I might want to go and have a look at Wendy and her provisions and see what's going on. And she very really definitely needs an EHCP if I'm spending that much money on her. Oh no, Ben Atkinson. There we go, he'll do. So from my delegated budget, my SCN element two, if you don't know what those words mean, go and have a look at my video about funding. Um, I'm providing him with a key mentor to check in. Um, and it probably cost me £14.56. It's only you know, five minutes a week for that by the looks of it. Um, from his pupil premium, I'm spending £89.74. From his PP Plus, he's another looked after child, we're spending uh, nearly £4,500. Um, and from my school budget main funding, so I obviously bought Accelerated Reader from the English budget, um, I'm spending £2.39. But you might still be looking at it going, yeah, okay, I can do that on an Excel spreadsheet. Yeah, you probably can but not quickly and easily. You can see, however, there are 
many, 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 many combinations of reports I could run. So I could choose any one of these filters for the first one, for the second one, for the third one. I've got some boxes down here that I can tick for various things. I could choose to only include certain pupils in that report. And you know what, if I find a report that I really, really like and I want to run it quickly the next time, I can save the report settings and then just click on it to run. Okay, so if you don't want to look at a costs report, you could look at a provisions outcome report. So if I give that one a click, it's pretty much the same kind of thing, but this time, instead of prioritizing cost over in that right-hand column, it's going to prioritize the outcome. So all I wanna know is what works. And I haven't reviewed anything, so nothing's gonna come up. Um, but if it had, it would be listing out all the provisions for me and telling me which ones work and which ones don't work. And again, I can break them down with all those different filters that we had. Our next type of report would be a provision summary report, which I'm not going to run, but this one you would export it to um, Excel or download it as a PDF file, and it's anonymized. So if you need to produce a report for your governors that says what is going on in your school, what you're spending money on, how many children are benefiting from each one of those provisions, this is the report that you would run. So most schools are supposed to report to their SEN governor three times a year as a kind of minimum. This would be a really great report, a little bit of a dialogue alongside it, 15 minutes to sit and type that while you're looking at it. That's all it's going to take you to actually run that kind of report. We also have a school summary, which is actually a fairly new report within the system. Mine's an all through school. I just need to make you aware of that. So mine goes from nursery through to year 13. Um, but what you can actually see there is the percentages of students who are on the SEN register. And then the one that everybody raves about, I suppose, so baseline statistics, and I've chosen Nottinghamshire for this one. So um, my school has apparently 2.27% of the whole school has an EHCP, um, whereas the national average is 2.82, and Nottinghamshire itself is 0.28. And I can have a look at that information and see whether I am vastly out from those. Just bear in mind that this data is a whole comparison. So I am an all through school, so actually I'm comparing against all through anyway. It's OK for me. But you need to remember if you are a primary school looking at this, it is including secondary school data and it is including special school data as well. Um, if you want to look at them separately, you need to go and download the National Baseline statistics um, and actually have a look at those spreadsheets for yourself they're separate spreadsheets for each different uh, type of school or type of phase that you're looking at um, and in some accounts not everybody's account in some accounts it also pulls across for you specific learn difficulty moderate learn difficulty etc so what are the needs of the children within your school so down here at the bottom we've got those two categories other difficulty disability and SEN support which some people say you shouldn't use them um, my personal opinion is sometimes they are the most appropriate category however I don't believe a child should stay in there for more than two cycles of APDR you should be looking to move them to one of the the proper categories at some point. So that was your whistle stop tour of uh, learning plans and provision maps. Your whole school on one page, your boxes up at the top with hyperlinks to jump to things. We had a quick look at plans, we've had a quick look at provisions and reports. Um, I didn't show you passports, I don't have one set up on here, but they are in here. Go look at my other video if you want to see one. Uh, we looked at meetings, logs, and I haven't even grazed the surface, but this is the programme that everybody asks me about. So that was a real whistle stop tour of the programme. Most of the features, I've probably given you a quick glimpse of them, but just give a quick summary there. We've got provisions, we've got plans, we've got passports, we've got meetings logs, we've got school robins, which is an add-on product, just to make you aware of that. I briefly touched on safeguarding, which again is an add-on product, but you can build it into there. Okay. We looked at reports and how you can quickly generate those and most importantly looked at that costed provision map which is so easy to pull because you've got all your information in one place. If you are interested in EduKey's learning plans and provision maps hop along to their website www.edukey.co.uk 
or www.provisionmap.co.uk and at the top of the screen you'll be able to click and you'll be able to find out some more information, some landing pages in there that give you a few more of the features that are hiding into it but also the pricing is on there as well. The company does not hide that from you. I hope it's been helpful um, and like I say if you want to know any more book a demo. Take care guys, bye bye. <music>